Welcome back to Science with Aeronautics 1. Today we will be talking about the atom bomb, particularly the ones that, uh, particularly the one that was dropped uh, on Hiroshima uh, and the one that was dropped on Nagasaki. So the one that was dropped on Hiroshima was a uranium bomb. It utilized an isotope of uranium called U-235. So, so instead of having the normal 238 protons and neutrons, uh, electrons, right, it had 235. This was a rare isotope, but it did more explosive damage than U-238. This was dropped on July... 16, uh, 1945 on Hiroshima, Japan. Now, the bomb that was dropped on Nagasaki was a plutonium bomb. And basically what a plutonium bomb is, is plutonium is like uranium, but it's man-made. Some traces of uranium have been, some traces of plutonium have been found in uranium ores, but not many. And plutonium is basically U-239. Plutonium is easier uh, uh, to obtain then U-235 um, and basically it's normal uranium U-238 with one extra neutron and then this was dropped on August 9th again 1945 on Nagasaki Japan now, when we talk about the atom bomb, a very famous name, uh, you might hear this name very often. Robert Oppen. You have to be very careful about how you spell his name. <laughs> Robert Oppenheimer was considered to be one of the one of the the many people uh, one of this is a, one of the main people who worked on the atom bomb who worked on the bombs. So basically, how an atom bomb works, right? It's the same for both bombs. You just said the plutonium bomb was tested at Trinity test site on the 16th of July, 1945, before the uranium bomb was dropped, because plutonium is just easier to obtain. So let's talk about how an atomic bomb works. So here, uh, you have, uh, of course it's not really what it looked like, but let's say this is something like what it looked like right let's say that that is your uranium and these are all atoms right and here is your ra radioactive material There's your radioactive material. So once your so once your radioactive material would come in contact with the uranium atoms or, or the plutonium atoms, what it would do is is a phenomenon 
called fission would occur. And what fission is, is the splitting of an atom. And the splitting of one atom can cause a, a grain of sand to jump. Again, it, it doesn't sound like much, but keep in mind, that's one atom. Think about how many atoms run into this bomb. Basically, once fission would happen with the one atom, right? One atom would break apart. There's like a broken atom, right? So, so one atom would break apart. The neutrons from that atom would go and split another atom. And another and another. This is called a chain reaction. This is why even a little bit, even just a little bit of uranium, sorry, even a little bit of radioactive material, which comes in contact with something like uranium or plutonium, can set off so much destruction. So the radioactive material wasn't a problem. It wasn't necessarily hard to obtain, and you didn't really need that much of it because of the chain reaction. The reason why uh, Hiroshima was targeted in Japan was because it had a large military base. They wanted to show that they could win the war. But also they wanted to destroy the military base in Hiroshima. Which they did. So they did with the uranium bomb. And the reason why you weren't safe anywhere in the city was because of the radiation. So radiation can pass through certain materials depending on what kind of radiation it is and what kind of material it's trying to pass through. So for example, let's take an everyday example. Let's say you're sitting in a car and light's passing through your window and it's hitting your skin. You would feel warmer when that sunlight hits you. The reason you feel warmer is because of radiation. What radiation does is it doesn't actually heat up the air around you, but it heats everything it touches. Some microwaves work like this. They, they project a high amount of radiation, and when it hits your food, it heats up your food. But the microwave's not actually hot. Well, of course the microwave's walls would be hot, but the air inside the mac uh, microwave wouldn't become hot. So radiation played a, uh, played a big part of this. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of radiation set up by this bomb. Okay, this bomb was detonated in the air, okay? In the air. It was described by the pilots of the plane that dropped the bomb as a mushroom cloud. It, it was described by people who saw it as like a mushroom cloud. So this was a lot of radiation that we're talking about, like a lot of radiation. And what happened was that the radiation will, would extend for miles and miles onward. Like if you're anywhere, maybe even a mile within the blast zone or half a mile, you'd probably be incinerated and you would be dead. So the radiation would pass through walls, and then it would be such high radiation that it would burn you. It, it would burn you. It would injure you. Things, things would go up in, uh, uh, things out in the street would go up in flames. Now, it was a very dark time, and a lot of the people who were on the plane were eventually driven crazy. Well, not all of them, but some of them who, who were on the plane, uh, well, who were on the planes that dropped the bomb, uh, that dropped the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, some of them went insane. Because imagine this, you have the blood of a whole, of, of two-thirds of a city 
of a highly populated city on your hand. And you know that the gamma rays and the radiation will last for a long time. I mean, kids in Japan recently just, just stopped getting birth defects. That's all the radiation left from 70, from 71 years ago. And that radiation can cause very severe birth defects. You, you, you can look up pictures online of, of uh, Japanese children with birth, birth defects uh, because of radiation. It's, it's horrifying. It's worse than horrifying. So, and, and the bomb dropped on, um, whatchamacallit, yeah, and the bomb dropped on Hiroshima was called the Little Man, and the bomb dropped on Nagasaki was called the Fat Man, because it was actually very big, it, it was bigger than the Hiroshima bomb. It was called Fat Man because it was physically larger than the Hiroshima bomb. So, thanks for watching. And remember, we learn history to not repeat the same mistakes that were made in the past. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below what you'd like to see next. Thank you.